Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SciShow Quiz Show, the only quiz show made of science. Today on the show we have internet hotshot Hank Green. Today I cleaned my fingernails so I would look good for the show. Fantastic! And we've got on the other side of the table, uh, Minute Physics wonder boy, Henry Reich. All, all shows are probably made of science. You know, there's atoms and... Okay, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Each of you will start out with 1,000 points. If you get a question correct, you will win some number of points that I will make up at that point in time. If you lose a question... You lose... That's right, yep. sure. If you, you lose points. You'll, I'll lose the question and the points. <laughs> yeah. If you lose the question, you will lose the question and the points. Hank? Yes, sir. You'll be competing on behalf of Max Lotzenheiser. So behalf of Max. Max. <laughs> Hank, you will be competing on behalf of Max Lotzenheiser. Hello, Max. And Henry, you've got Florian Stingelmeyer. Hello, Florian. That's an amazing name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stefan, what can our contestants win today? Thanks, Michael. Today, our contestants will have a chance to go home with this Pizza John keychain, or perhaps a Pizza John lapel pin. Back to you. If you'd like one of these lovely people to play for you, you can go to subbable.com slash scishow. <coughs> round number one is called the Winter Solstice Lightning Round. Oh, it's fast. It doesn't actually involve any lightning. Um, Thunder snow? Thunder snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a true or false question. Oh dear. True or false, the day of the winter solstice has both the latest sunrise and the earliest sunset of the year. False. Correct! Oh 100 God. points for Henry! <laughs> False, but it's a common misconception. The day of the winter solstice does have the fewest hours of daylight, but the days with the latest sunrise and the earliest sunset occur about a month apart. In the United States, for example, the sun sets at its earliest about a week before the winter solstice, while the latest sunrise of the year occurs in early January. I, nice. I have made a video about this. I'm gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Is the entire... The entire set of questions from Minute Physics videos. <laughs> Round number two! Are there also Minute Earth videos? <laughs> um, Should I have watched more Minute Earth and Minute <laughs> Physics videos before coming in today? Yes. Okay, true or false? While astronomical winter begins on the day of the solstice, meteorological winter always begins on December 1st. I'm gonna just go true. You are correct! 100 points to Hank. I didn't know that. What? It seemed like something that would be true. Meteorological winter is a thing. It's the three calendar months with the lowest average temperatures. And in the northern hemisphere, the coldest months are December, January, and February. So meteorologists begin tracking winter weather patterns on December 1st. By the same token, meteorological spring begins on March 1st. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's interesting. Meteorological winter. I didn't even know that Who was a thing. Who decides that? I mean, it might not even probably? be true. I'm just reading the script. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> true or false, Earth is closer to the sun at the winter solstice False. than it is at the summer solstice. It is true. I'm very sorry, Hank. You just lost Wait, 100 points. Closer to the sun. It changes around. I, for, to be fair, I was also going to say false, and <laughs> because I didn't actually think about what the question was saying. <laughs> for so I'm, for so I'm glad that you got it first. True! The winter solstice occurs about a week before perihelion, when the Earth is closest to the Sun in its orbit. In fact, Earth is 5 million kilometers closer to the Sun in January than it is in July. But the difference in temperature that we experience between the seasons doesn't have to do with our proximity to the Sun. It has to do with the angle of the Sun's rays that each hemisphere receives. Okay, next round is called The Science of Christmas. Oh. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> scientists unfortunately tell us that reindeer cannot fly. However, reindeer do have a lot of really interesting facts about them. Oh, good. So which of these four is not true? Not true. A. Reindeer can see ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. B. Reindeer and caribou are the same animal. C. Reindeer have been known to live in desert climates. Or D. Reindeer mate in the spring instead of the fall due to changes in daylight. I'm gonna go with C. Incorrect! The fake fact is D. Reindeer do mate in the fall just like other kinds of deer. But unlike most large mammals, they can readily see ultraviolet light, which allows them to see things like urine left by predators and lichens, which are a precious food source in the winter. And while reindeer, which live in northern Europe, are smaller than their North American cousins, the caribou, they're considered the same species, Rangifer tarandus. It's also true that reindeer have been found to live in desert climates. As recently as the 1800s, caribou were found in the northern reaches of the Great Basin Desert. 
The chemistry of Christmas trees! <laughs> Scientists from Nova Scotia Agricultural College conducted a series of experiments on cut evergreens to figure out how they could prolong the life of Christmas trees and prevent them from dropping their needles. That's good. I, I, I like this line of research because it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, this one weird trick kept them fresher longer than anything else. Was it A, hanging lights on the tree? B, not watering the tree. C, keeping a bowl of fresh fruit under the tree. Or D, keeping the room warm. That's a bunch of weird. That... I'm gonna go bowl of fruit, because it's the weirdest weird. of the tricks. Incorrect! Uh, the correct answer a is trick. A, hanging lights, lights on the tree. Oh yeah? Hanging lights well, on the tree. Well, I do that. I've already done that. Congratulations! So basically, this is completely <laughs> useless in advice. Yes! Well, unless you Entirely. don't use lights. That's a true. lot of people don't use lights. Experiments using different colors of electric lights and control trees with no lights at all found that trees decorated with white, full-spectrum lights retained their needles 30 days longer than trees with no lights at all. And this is because the decorated trees were able to use the white light to produce food, while the tree kept in the dark had to draw from its energy reserves to stay alive. Interestingly, though, trees hung with blue lights died faster than any other trees in the experiment. The scientists also noted that giving your tree water is vital to keeping it alive longer, of course, and cooler temperatures, not warmer, help them keep their needles. As for the fruit, the experts said that if you want your tree to stay fresh, keep it away from fresh fruit at all costs. And that's because ripening fruit releases a gaseous hormone known as ethylene, which is the same hormone that triggers the death process in plants. So keep that fruit basket away from your tree. So when you think of Christmas plants, other than Christmas trees, you might think of things like mistletoe and holly and poinsettias, all of which are super poisonous. Um, but there are some plants that are so dangerous that you'd never bring them into your house and put presents around them. So, this has nothing to do with Christmas, but what is the world's most poisonous plant? Is it A, the castor bean plant, mm. B, the strychnine tree, C, <laughs> oleander, or D, common ivy? Castor bean. Incorrect! What? The correct answer is C, oleander. I knew oleander is pretty poisonous, but doesn't, most, isn't like... This is the most poisonous to eat or just oh to no, be around? Oh no, I'm totally wrong, I'm totally wrong. I'm wrong. I was thinking of something else. Good. I'm taking like... We're the, down, I'm down to 800. I'm taking the SAT strategy, which is not answering is often better <laughs> than answering and getting it wrong. Yeah, just letting it makes, Hank self destruct. It makes for there. really uninteresting content, though. It does. So what's I'll have more to start. important to you? Winning. <laughs> <laughs> All of these plants are terribly poisonous, but the most poisonous is considered to be C. Oleander, which, like holly, mistletoe, and your Christmas tree, is an evergreen. While the fruit of the castor, strychnine, and ivy plants are all poisonous to humans, oleander is different in that every part of the plant is deadly to both humans and other animals as they contain multiple types of toxins. The most potent of them is known as oleandrin, and it works by blocking the enzymes that allow your cells to use and store energy, especially cells in your heart. It's so powerful that ingesting a single oleander leaf can kill you, and people have even been poisoned by eating honey made by bees that had eaten the nectar of an oleander plant. So this next round is called Know Your Snow. It's going to be about snow, and this is where you can wager some number of points. You have a thousand, you have eight hundred. Um, so while you guys decide how many points you want to wager, we're going to go to a commercial break or something. <laughs> Welcome back! <laughs> Which of these statements about the formation of snow is not true? Okay. A. All snowflakes have six sides. B. Snow can't form below negative 20 degrees Celsius. C. Snow absorbs red light more than blue light. Or D. The shape of a snowflake is determined both by humidity and temperature. Go ahead and write your answers on your cards. Which one of those things is not true? Which one of those is not true? That's cool, though. I, I'm interested. I agree with in, you. I'm interested to. You agree with me? I saw your answer. You oh. were showing it to me. Whoa, cheater up in here. <laughs> Luckily, well, I had already cheater. written my answer down. Oh. oh. Show so your answers to we the camera. We went with the same guess. Wow. Both of you were wrong. Oh. What? I completely disagree. The correct answer is B. Again, according to the script, I didn't write this. Okay. This guy knows a lot of stuff, so maybe he's <laughs> well, right. We'll, we'll see. 
The answer is B. At around negative 20 degrees, it does become less likely that snow will form, simply because most of the moisture in the air will have precipitated out at higher temperatures. But it is a myth that it can get too cold to snow. And as evidence, I give you Antarctica. Temperatures there are rarely above negative 40 Celsius, but the place is no stranger to snow. As for the other answers, due to the shape of the water molecule, water crystals always form in six-sided symmetrical shapes. Also, snowflakes absorb red light and reflect blue light more than other frequencies, which is why snowpack can often look bluish. And snow tends to form in large, flat flakes when it's colder and more humid, but forms long, six-sided cylinders when it's slightly warmer and less humid. Basically, the wetter the air is, the more complex your snowflakes get. Let's I've definitely seen non-six-sided snowflakes. Siri, are all snowflakes six-sided? Well, maybe it's because they start out six-sided, and then one of the sides breaks off or something. It's no, because there's fault. like little pellet snow. There's like little crystally snow that looks like this. Let me, let me show. There's snow that looks like that. It probably is like hexagonal in some fashion because of the way that ice crystals work. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that this is not a six-sided thing. I bet snow on a planet that has extremely high atmospheric density and very cold weather would be, it would be like ice 11 snow. That could and that also would happen. Probably, it would probably be four-sided. That's very true. Or rhomboidal. It's a different. It's a different phase of ice. Ice it's has a, like fifteen phases. It's a different phase of ice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hank ended up with zero points. <laughs> Henry ended up with three hundred ninety-nine point nine 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 nine. I don't know how many zeros you put on there. Congratulations, Henry. You won on behalf of Florian. Congratulations, Florian. <laughs> The I best, am, may the best name win. I am unsurprised by the outcome of this particular round of SciShow Quiz Show. Neither am I. Thanks for watching <laughs> this episode of SciShow Quiz Show. If you'd like one of these contestants to play for you, you can go to subbable.com slash scishow. And don't forget to go to Minute Physics at youtube.com slash Minute Physics. And Minute Earth. And Minute Earth. And Minute Earth at youtube.com slash Minute Earth. Goodbye! <laughs>